hi, uh, this is Grace. This is Vintage Film Channel. Me and uh, two old guys talking about Guy King today. If you're, as John says, of a certain age, you probably know this television show. This minute, we have five episodes on the channel. We will. This will be the sixth one coming up. And I thought it'd be interesting to talk about the program. So let's let's get going. Yeah, the whole thing was for me was about Penny. Penny was Guy King's uh, niece, and she was. She was, I don't know how old I was when I saw this, but she was a hottie. That's all I can say. Well, I, I wanted to be Penny, flying those airplanes and stuff. Yes. Oh, yeah. So did my wife. It was originally a children's show, a very expensive children's show, if you can imagine, flying airplanes around. Um, and it, it's one of those shows that really had a long life. And it played on every network, ABC, NBC, and CBS, eventually, one way or the other. And it was a, a very, it was a big hit. And I like Sky King as much as I like Penny, although she was cute, okay? And Clipper was kind of nice, too. But Sky King, it was a twin engine. The songbird, some of the comments, and there are a couple here I want to read to you. Sky King, I was convinced my dad was Sky King. Growing up in South Dakota, my dad had a, Single engine plane that would fly around the state. Turns out he was a veterinarian, and uh, the ranches and sick animals are miles apart, so two way radios and planes, that's what they needed. So she remembers that from her youth. She lives about a half mile from where the song bird was flying, where they filmed it uh, the, from the Flying Crown Ranch. She used to watch it all the time. And now there's an old Apple Valley airport there as well. So she remember, she actually remembers them filming those scenes. I always looked forward to watching Sky King. I later got to spend 40 years flying commercially and 25,000 hours of flying. So th that inspired that person. Just a couple more. Thanks for posting. I purchased the overpriced Sky King official box set with booklet last year. Quality of most is not as good as what you posted. I enjoyed watching Sky King on Saturday. I'm 72 years old and still enjoy watching each episode. And this is the last one. Women can't take it like us men. And this is from a Gary Hunley. I played Mickey in the last three episodes of Sky King. I am 75 and I believe the only one left of all the cast members love doing the show. Actually, we do have the last episode of the series uh, on the channel. So, yeah, he's in that. Yeah. This started on CBS as a Sunday afternoon kids show. All right. Then, uh, and I might have run a year, and then ABC got it. And if I'm not mistaken, ABC at some point r moved it from a weekend, let's say Saturday morning kids show, to a prime time show. That's when it took off. But eventually it went into syndication. It went into, uh, I think it started on CBS, went to maybe NBC and then ABC. And it went into syndication where it lives forever. Syndication is where any individual station can buy it and play it anytime they want, as opposed to the network sending it from New York and everybody playing at the same time. One of the things that I found fascinating was that it was a very expensive show. And I think the reason they moved it to prime time, quite frankly, is because it was expensive to do. All these airplanes flying around gas. It was shot mostly in, quite frankly, in Hollywood, in a studio. Um, and the airport that lady talked about, Apple Valley, is just, you know, maybe 30 miles, but it's over the Hollywood Hills into the desert. And that's where they shot all the, the flying scenes and the desert scenes. But it was very realistic in the sense that they really had the Cessna planes. They really did taxi them back and forth. And so there was a lot of, um, for the time, more realistic action. Because they used real airplanes, right? And they would shoot them up in the air and they'd taxi them around. Um, and because the whole idea was that Sky King was a an Arizona rancher, he didn't have uh, airports to go to. He would always have to rescue a penny from somewhere in the desert. They what the first pilot they hired for the series to run the airplane to you know land and save Penny. He couldn't do it, he wasn't qualified, he couldn't land in the desert. So they got the sales manager for Cessna. He could he could land a plane anywhere, and he became the regular the regular guy who would 
could land this in front of the camera in the desert. This I just thought was cute. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Everybody wave goodbye, and we're going to turn the recording off about right now. Out of the clear blue of the western sky comes Sky King. Brought to you by Nabisco, National Biscuit Company. Car one, come in, Judd. Just received a call from Kingston Police Department. Three masked men held up Kingston Mining Company. Escaped with payroll and red and white station wagon. Believed headed toward Grover on Highway 8. Description, one man. About 5 feet 10 or 11. Wearing black leather jacket, gray slacks, no hat. Second man, about 6 feet. Muscular build. Red check shirt. Third man remained in car. No description. These men are armed and dangerous. Over. All right, Judd, I'll cover Highway 8. Anything further developments, let me know. Out. Calling Flying Crown Ranch. Sheriff Hargrove calling Flying Crown Ranch. Come in. Sky King speaking, Mitch. I was about to invite you to dinner when we intercepted the report on that robbery. Anything I can do? Over. I'd like to have you take to the air, Sky, and see if you can spot that station wagon. Roger, and out. Can I go with you, Uncle Sky? Sure. I'll need a good observer. to run out of gas. Uh, shut up and push. There. That ought to keep it hidden from the road. What are we going to do now? Strike out on foot and find a spot to hold up in until the search dies down. What about food and water? If we don't get out of here quick, you'll get your food and water in a federal prison. Songbird calling Sheriff's Car 1. Songbird calling Sheriff's Car 1. Come in, please. Sheriff's Car 1. Come in, Sky. Covered Highway 8 for 50 miles, Mitch, and no sign of the station wagon. My gas is running low, so I'm turning back. By the time I refuel, it'll be too dark to see anything. Call me in the morning if you want me to continue the search. Over. I'll do that, Sky. Thanks. Out. Songbird out. tricks on me or those two horses over there. If they ain't, I'm saying things too. Same here. What do you make of it? Two horses, two men, huh? No, only one man. This horse is for packing supplies in. I hope the supplies include food. Is that all you ever think of? Just to be sure you get to the grub first, suppose you pay our host a visit. Sure, I'll pay him a visit. Brand, none of that trigger-happy stuff has made you so popular with the law.
I took care of him. Good. Temporarily, of course. You know, this fellow will be coming too pretty soon. There's a rope on one of the horses. Get it and tie him up. Oh, uh, you better gag him too. Okay. You know, Lonnie, when this fella comes to, I think it'd be a good idea if he didn't see our faces. So far, nobody can identify us. You know, I've been thinking along the same lines. We'll let Carl do all the tending necessary to this guy. After you tie that fellow up in there, pull him out of sight and out of our way. Say, can't you guys do any work yourselves? Come on, get with it. There isn't any grub in this pack. Doesn't look like he planned on staying here long. If he wasn't planning on staying, then somebody's going to be expecting him back pretty soon. Yeah, I think tonight's about as long as we better plan on using this place. robbers have disappeared too. Well, if I knew that, Penny, I wouldn't be sitting here keeping it a secret. You know what I think? I... Flying Crown Ranch. Oh, hello, Mitch. Anything new? Sure, I agree with you. They could have doubled back and gone in any direction. In the morning? Sure, I'll stay close by. Just give me a call. Right. Good night. Did I sleep like a log? Yeah, with $60,000 for a pillow, who wouldn't? <laughs> well, you can't eat $60,000, and I'm hungry. Oh, we're just as hungry as you are. And yeah, maybe we could shoot ourselves a rabbit or something. Have somebody hear us? Yeah, we should have stayed on the highway and grabbed ourselves another car. Coming to this hole in the ground was a crazy idea. Don't you do anything but beef. Go on up the hill. Maybe you can spot a ranch house where we can get some grub. Well, if I can't, I'm getting out of this place. What's up? You know, Lonnie, I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Such as? Such as I'm tired of hearing Carl complain. And such as this money would look a lot better split two ways. Three. How do you plan on going about it? Well, when Carl gets back, we'll tell him that we're going to ride into town for supplies and leave him here to watch our boy. Then we don't come back. That's for me. I figure we're about 12 miles from the town of Grover. We can take the horses and ride in there and catch the first bus out of town. We better take the money out of this bag. Put it in the saddlebag before Carl gets back. Yeah. We'll stuff some paper in it and leave a few bills scattered on top just in case he decides to look in. Let me do the talking. Okay. Well, what'd you see? Yeah, there's nothing around this place. 
Lonnie and I decided to take the horses and go into the nearest town and pick up some food. Enough to last about a week. I can't think of a better hideout than this mine. Now wait a minute. Why have I got to be the one to stay here? You guys can sit just as well as I can. What are you, a wise guy? You know your picture's hanging up in every post office in the country. And besides, we need somebody to stay here and watch the kid and look out for the money. I can fix him so he won't need any watching. Don't be a fool. Come on, Lonnie. The sooner we get to town, the sooner we get back. You take care of things here. What if something happens and you don't get back? Then you get the whole 60 grand. Don't worry, nothing's gonna happen. Slippery friend. This time we'll tie you so you won't get loose. Sheriff's car one calling Flying Crown Ranch. Sheriff's car one calling Flying Crown Ranch. Come in. This is the Flying Crown Ranch to Sheriff's car one. Over. I'm on Highway 8, Sky. I didn't call you from the office because I didn't want to waste time. State police found the whole of car hidden amongst rocks about five miles south of Soda Springs in the Lantana Hills. We're going to comb the area and can use your plane. I'm practically in the air, Mitch. I'll keep in contact with you. Out. Call Bob Carey. We can use him and his plane, too. Bob, please? He's not there? He what? Didn't come home last night. Oh, yes. Yes. I remember he said something about it, but... Where? Are you sure? Well, naturally. Well, look, Helen, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Bye. What did they say about Bob? He was supposed to come home last night, but he didn't. His parents are really worried. Well, I heard that. Did they know where he went? Prospecting for uranium around the old Foster mine in the Lantana Hills. I'm going with you. No, you're not. Bob's my friend, too. I'm going with you. All right. too low for a routine flight. Could be an air search, you know. Yeah, I never thought of that. We haven't got too far to go. We better knock on it.
I don't see Bob's horses. Well, if they took him, they took his horses, too. I'll go have a look around. You stay here. This is either a trick or there's only one of them there. Well, I haven't got time to wait. I'm going after him. Call Mitch and have him get here just as quick as he can. Okay. You got one of them, huh? Where are the other two? I haven't seen anybody around here but this fella. He fell trying to get away. Hit his head and knocked himself out. Penny in the plane? No. Penny! Penny! Here I am, Uncle Sky. Look who I found. Bob, am I glad to see you. No gladder than I am to see you, Sky. Maybe you better brief me. Those bandits grabbed Bob yesterday afternoon, and they kept him bound and gagged ever since. Were there three of them? Yes. The other two double-crossed this fella took the money in my horses and rode into Grover this morning to catch the first bus out. We still have time to get to town before that bus leaves. Would you recognize either one of them? They kept me in another part of the mine. He's the only one who ever came near me. There'd be a lot of people catching that noon bus. Maybe he'll point them out if we explain they were double-crossing him. Probably would if he were conscious, but there's no telling when he's going to come to. Well, it's our only chance. Let's dump him in the plane. We'll try to bring him around before we get to town. I almost forgot my Geiger counter. Be with you in a minute. I better radio what's going on. Calling Highway Patrol, car 21. Climb up on the wing, Bob, and give me a hand. Here, Penny, hold it. Hey, be careful with that thing. What made it do that? It's sensitive to uranium. He probably got some dust on his clothes from sleeping in the mine last night. Is there uranium in that mine? Yeah, a pretty strong indication of one wall. Did the other two fellows sleep in the mine, too? Yeah. Here, Mitch. Take him back to town in your car. I got a better way to spot those two men. You have? How? With a Geiger counter. Let's go. Penny, 
Mm-hmm. Sit down on that bench and stay out of trouble. Okay. Bob, keep that Geiger counter tucked under your arm. Don't make it obvious, but screen everybody that gets on that bus. It'll be loading. In a Attention, please. Passengers departing for Middleton, Carrollton, and Point Z can now board the bus. All aboard. How long have you been president of the Grover Flying Club? A little more than a year. How many members do you have? About 40, but only four planes. What's the purpose of the club? To promote flying <laughs> to aid... Stay with him, Bob. I'll go get the other one. come into the barn, but uh, I guess he went on up the street. What'd they do with the other fella? The sheriff drove up and took him to jail. Well, I guess we better get back and organize a search of the town. to do today is getting it to finish. Well, it's the finish that counts, Mitch. And I'm glad this was a good one. Me too. Yeah, it's good to relax. That was a wonderful dinner, Sky. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did too. That Penny's a good cook. Oh. You bet she is. <laughs> Coffee, Sheriff. Thank you. Thanks, hon. Some milk? Thanks, Penny. You know, I haven't thanked you yet, Skye, for coming to my rescue. I haven't thanked you for grabbing those two men and saving that payroll. And I haven't thanked you for a real exciting day. Well, thanks for all the bouquets, but it seems to me that the real hero is our little friend here. <laughs>